I'm Jonathan Calloway Peak, and I am the advocacy coordinator at the Montgomery Center for Independent Living. My mom had polio when she was a child, and it affected the curvature of her spine. And somehow during my delivery, the doctors didn't realize it. And um, I was basically, I guess, caught in the birth canal, and uh, they couldn't get me out. He started having trouble getting out, and I said, do a C-section. And they said, no. They said, we can see his head, might as well just go ahead, and he's gonna come any minute now. And four hours later, of that expulsion stage, he still hadn't come out. And they used forceps, and when they pulled me out with the forceps, um, the back of my head smashed against her pelvic bone and um, crushed all the nerves along the back side of my head and created a traumatic brain injury. And so they said, we just see so much damage in him. They said, we really just think that you're just gonna have to leave him with us, is what they said. And I even wondered, and they said, we'll put him in an institution. The doctors told my parents, um, I think they, they essentially said, uh, leave him here and go home and try again in six weeks. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna take him home. And that's all I said. We just said, we're taking him home. And they said, well, you, they just kind of were very patronizing. They kind of like patted me on the head verbally and said, well, you just take him home and you just enjoy him while you can because the time's gonna come when you will not be able to care for him by yourself or at home. You're gonna have to do something with him. So it's like he was a doll and I was supposed to go home and play with him for a little while. And then when I couldn't handle him anymore, do something with him, but we took him home. John didn't have any motor skills when he was a baby. He just sat in his infant seat, and uh, he, he, he never crawled. Uh, he kind of moved around on his belly a little bit when he was little, but he never got himself up. And um, we tried to you know help him walk and do these things, but he just wasn't developmentally ready. And so I went to this neurological pediatrician, and he was in a group with two other regular pediatricians. So that was our group. And I would see different doctors at different times. But he told me, he said, don't even try to stimulate him or read him, because he said, there's nothing there. And he said, you will be beating your head against the wall. That is what this man told me. The first inkling I had that John was really, had more than these doctors were telling me was when I was teaching him his letters and I taught him the capital letters and the little letters by saying, this is the mother and this is the baby. And I said to him, John, where they were all spread out on, a, on the floor. And I said, now you show me the mother or show me an A. And he showed me an A. And then I, I was just shocked. And I said, well, where's the baby A? And he showed me that too. And I knew then that he had more than these doctors had ever thought. There's a very fine line you walk when you're a parent of a child with disabilities. You're always worried, you want to, you want to help them, you want to support them, and you want to encourage them. But you always, you don't want to enable them. So you're worried, am I doing too much? Am I not doing enough? And you walk that line with decision after decision every single day. After all we had been through, I cannot tell you the joy and the celebration of watching Jonathan Callaway Peak walk across that stage at the graduation from the University of Maryland. It was our finest moment. It was just the most wonderful moment of my life. Uh, when I think about how, the world, how I want the world to treat me, I don't want to be seen as a person with a disability. I want people to see me as Jonathan. Um, I am who I am. Um, I, want, I want their attitudes about me to be formed by my personality, not what my physical limitations may or may not be. Um, one of the things I see a lot is I see people shying away um, from people with disabilities and not, not interacting with them, um, I guess because they don't feel comfortable or they haven't been exposed to being around people with disabilities. But I, I think it's really good just to go up and, you know, do something as simple as introduce yourself, say, hi, I'm Jonathan, you know, what's your name? I don't care if you have a disability or not, if you go up and you, you introduce yourself and say, you know, I'm Jonathan, it's nice to meet you, you know, I mean, people will smile. Um, I, I just, I, I don't think they've had that exposure. Um, I, I think people are not comfortable with what they haven't been exposed to before. 
And I think if you deal with people with disabilities on a daily basis, you start to get, there's a com comfort level and you, you don't, you, you stop seeing disabilities, you know, you just see the person for who they are. Um, but I, I think people just, just need more exposure and more understanding. At the Montgomery Center for Independent Living, our, our mantra, our, our, our slogan is empowering people to become more active within their community. And we do that, uh, we offer a lot of services um, to try to help people become more active in their community and become more independent. And I, you know, I want to be able to come up with solutions to these problems that the people with disabilities face in their lives. And I, I think that being on the council is, is a great way to affect change that can, can make people's lives a little bit easier. I am absolutely amazed at the place Jonathan is today. I, I can't believe it. And it's a whole new feeling for me to feel that I don't have to worry anymore. I can see that he's got his feet on the ground. I can see that he has a future. And I can see that my role is really over now. And I can just sit back and relax and enjoy my son. And it's an amazing feeling. I am the mother of a disabled child and I know how absolutely devastated you are when you're told that there's something wrong with your baby. And to any mothers out there who have had this happen to them, I, my experience has just been you have got to never, never give up. Hold on to your hope and your dreams and don't take no for an answer. There are options out there. There are things that can be done. And you search high and low, but you will find the right thing for you, for your child. And you will need time to get away. And you'll need times to pull the covers up over your head and just not even want to face things. And that's all okay. But just know in the end that that child is going to be so special and so precious and so invaluable to you. And you will learn lessons from that child. And um, they're just a blessing. My parents were told when I was born that I would have to live my entire life in an institution. I'm Jonathan Peake. I'm a graduate of the University of Maryland's Honors Program. I am Advocacy Coordinator at the Montgomery Center for Independent Living, and I can. <laughs>